My name is Dylan Kotecki, and today we're going to be talking about seamless compositing instead of on one foot or raw. Now, today I just have a few relatively simple, fun ideas that you can use inside of Photo Raw to blend different images in with one another and use layers to mask images together. Now, some compositing can take quite a while. You know, you're separating a certain element from an image and you're blending it in with one another. But today, since we have a limited amount of time, I figured I would share a few different ideas that you can jump right into instead of Photo Raw with your own images and get creative to build uh, an amazing result. So first things first, when it comes to compositing with landscapes, an easy compositing idea would be just to swap a sky. Swapping a sky is a really fun way to bring in a bit of interest in the background, especially if you're dealing with a dull or really flat sky background. And the great thing about Almond Photo Raw is that we have Sky Swap AI built right into it and you can quickly and easily swap a sky and really create an awesome image just by building a different sky into that background. So I have a few different examples for sky swapping. The first example I have is a more overcast type sky. I've found that it's much easier to swap a sky in an image such as this, where it's relatively overcast, the scene is a little bit more evenly lit, there's some soft lighting going on, just because it's a little bit tougher to match up the shadows when you have a high contrast sunny day scene than it is if you have an image like this where everything is a little bit more evenly lit. So the first thing I want to do within this photograph here is just develop the basic settings. To do that, I'm just going to go into my tone and color, and I'm going to go in here and just use this camera profile here on one landscape. And all I'm going to do after that is just add in a little bit more contrast. And that's really all I'm going to do as far as the basic global adjustments to the image. I don't really like to do a whole lot when it comes to um, the developing of the image beforehand, simply because I may want to modify the look of the foreground section a little bit later on when I've swapped that sky. So let's go into the sky section now of On One Photo Raw. I'm just going to select sky here. And that's automatically going to go in. It's going to find my foreground versus my background, and it's going to create a mask for me. I can see it's already created this mask here. It does a great job there of just finding that foreground and background. And now all I have to do is find a sky that works for this particular image. Now this is sort of the tricky part. When it comes to finding a sky, you want to match up the sky with the foreground. And so with this particular scene, I probably wouldn't want to do something like this, where I have a really intense sunlit backdrop or something like that, just because it looks unnatural, it appears, it appears fake. And the biggest thing we want to maintain inside of the sky swapping process or compositing is believability. And so we want things to match up. We want them to look natural while we're editing them. So rather than going in there and using this type of sky, we're going to go into our category here. And a sky section that I typically like when I'm modifying images like this is more of a stormy sky or an overcast sky or even a moody type sky. So let's just check these stormy options here. Now, even this one right out of the gate, it doesn't look too bad, but you can see it's just a little bit too dark for what we're dealing with within our foreground. And so let's just travel through some of these other skies here. A little bit too bright. So, you know, we're just looking at which one works best. I would say this one could be a contender. That probably works the best as far as the ones that I've shown. Um, but you can see that matching up the sky can be a little bit tricky. And so let's, for example, just go back to that sky number three. So we've chosen that. It works really well. We don't have any haloing going on. You know, it looks pretty natural within the scenery here. Now, the one thing I will say is that this background section is just a little bit too bright for the foreground. Now, what I mean by that is this, this rocky area here just seems a little bit unnatural compared to this really sort of not bright backdrop, but these clouds back there are a little bit brighter than what we're dealing with within the foreground. So there's a couple of different ways that we can match up the foreground and background to compensate for that. One way is to modify the sky. So inside of Sky Swap AI, we can go down into this appearance section here and we can modify the appearance of the sky. Now, right out of the gate, I'm noticing that the sky here has a little bit more of a, a cooler temperature than the actual foreground section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna warm the sky up. And that helps to, again, just match up the tone with our foreground and our background. Another thing that we can do is we can modify the brightness or the haze within the image. With brightness, we can brighten up the sky to, again, just match up with that foreground section that we're dealing with. And I think in this case, brightening up the sky really helps to ensure that we have a more consistent looking background versus our foreground there. Another thing we can do is we can actually bring in haze. 
So haze is just going to add this sort of foggy, hazy look into the sky. And when we're dealing with a sky like this, where if we turn this off and on, we pretty much have haze across the entirety of the sky region. This is a great option for these types of images where we're working with more of a hazy type sky. So if we check the before and after here, nothing too crazy, but it definitely adds in a lot more interest into the background versus having just a dull, all white tonal background back there. So one thing I do want you to keep in mind is that you don't typically have to completely swap the entirety of the sky or make it a completely new sky background. One thing that works the majority of the time is just blending and making sure that that sky in the background works naturally with your foreground scenery, such as we did here. You know, it, it is a complete sky swap, but we do have elements of that original sky in the sky that we're swapping it in with. So if we again turn this off and on here, it's almost matching up this right hand side with the original sky. But then we have this other creative element on the left hand side, just giving it a little bit more interest within that background. Now, sometimes when we're swapping a sky, and I'll just reset this here, when we're swapping a sky, we may need to modify our foreground section to match up with the sky that we're modifying. So let's go into our categories here. I'll go back to that seriously stormy category. And if I go into something like, let's see here. Oh, that's a little bit too dark. Where were we at? But even something like this. So let's go in here and let's actually just match up the sky with the foreground. So we're going to do the same thing we did earlier. We'll just warm things up a little bit. We'll brighten and then we'll add in some haziness to match up with the foreground. So once we've done that, one thing we can do to match up with the background section with the sky we saw turned to, we can go back into the develop tab and we can actually boost up different tonalities to match that sky. So for example, this sky here is really quite bright, especially from this left-hand side. So what we can do in our develop tab is we can actually pull up on the white slider here to give our image a little bit more of that white feel to match the contrast that's coming from that sky that we're swapping into the background scene. Now, this doesn't work in every single image and not every photograph calls for a sky swap. But again, one thing I would recommend doing is just trying to match up the foreground element with that background sky that you're swapping in with. So for example, with this sky here, this original sky, I probably wouldn't go into, and let me just reset these settings here. I probably wouldn't go in and swap this with a completely blue sky, um, just because if I turn down these modifications here, it just appears a little bit unnatural and a little bit forced. Now you can do it, and especially when, when you have a more overcast foreground section, you can incorporate a sky such as this into it, but you're going to have to do a little bit of modifying in terms of the appearance of that sky to make it appear a little bit more natural and make sure that these elements within the foreground match up with that sky in the background there. But one thing when it comes to swapping skies, if you are modifying a more overcast scene, I'd recommend incorporating a more overcast sky into that scenery. Hey, Eric Kona here, one of your instructors for the Travel Photography Conference, and I can't wait to be teaching alongside some of the best in the industry. Go over to kelby1live.com and learn more. I hope to see you there.